Hi, Michael Tillinger here and I want to talk to you about Ubuntu and the Ubuntu movement and Ubuntu politics and the Ubuntu party and the reason why the Ubuntu movement has decided to withdraw from politics completely worldwide. Now for those that are new to the Ubuntu movement may not know the full story and how the Ubuntu movement arose, came to be and how in 2009 I took the decision to get involved in politics and for many years I believed and I promoted very strongly that the Ubuntu movement needs to get involved in politics because we believe that we could inject a seed of consciousness into the political beast and I still believe it to a certain extent but unfortunately the Ubuntu movement or fortunately we have grown so much and we've learned so much through being involved in the political arena that we now realize that we no longer need to be in the political arena to inject that seed of consciousness into the political beast. And it was really a journey of unbelievable discovery and consciousness expansion for me and for all those that took that road and that path with me, that journey with me. So what happened is that by 2009, uh, I was, it's actually when Kerry Cassidy came to visit me here in South Africa that she made a, a suggestion, hey, why don't you start a political party? Because at, at that stage, the Ubuntu movement was very new. And the idea of contributionism was being promoted and formulated and new ideas were falling into place all the time. And, uh, and it was really a fledgling movement that was trying to find its way and what to do, how to spread the message of a world without money and a world free of money and something completely new that's never been done before. How can we work together and create abundance and prosperity without money? So naturally and obviously, one starts to think immediately that we got to start doing things without money and lead by example to show others how we can do things without money. And then Kerry Cassidy came to visit me in 2009 and suggested one day, jokingly, I thought, hey, why don't you start a political party? And then, lo and behold, I laughed. I thought it was a silly idea. And then, who knows, you know, late, one year later, we had the Ubuntu party that was registered and with a manifesto, which is just really an expansion of the Ubuntu liberation movement's philosophy and manifesto. And that became the foundation for the Ubuntu party in 2010. So the Ubuntu party was then formed with a very simple human, humanitarian manifesto and a plan of action of how to inject this new way of thinking to create something completely opposite to, to capitalism, to create something completely different that's never been done before, how to create societies and communities that work without money and create abundance without the need for money. And that became our manifesto for the Ubuntu party. And very quickly, the Ubuntu party in South Africa then ran in the local elections in 2012, here in our town and our municipality, in, in the Emakazeni municipality and Waterfall Boerfen and our four towns. And then by 2014, the party then ran uh, for in the national elections, where we contested all the municipalities and also parliament, going for parliament. And that was a huge shift up. But it was that during that period in 2014 that I learned everything I had to know about politics. And in the process of trying to inject that, that virus of consciousness or the seed of consciousness into the political beast, I realized how crooked, controlled, manipulated the political system was and how the outcome of any election is completely and utterly controlled. So, by 2016, sorry, by 2015, we had a political party registered in Canada as well, but unfortunately we had a bit of turbulence with the Canadian team that caused a deregistration of that party because of inner fighting and bickering, and that had to be stopped. But by 2015, we also ran in the political elections in two constituencies in the UK, because Paul Toussaint went and registered the Ubuntu party as a political party in the UK. And we found two candidates and enough money to support those who ran in, in um, Sutton Coldfield and uh, Stoke-on-Trent. And uh, that was a great experience for us in the UK. And then by 2016, we ran in the elections in South Africa again, in the local municipal elections, where the Ubuntu party ran in 13 municipalities. Already then, we realized we don't have to go for the head, for government, for parliament, for the seats in parliament and trying to control things from the top. Already then, we realized that the power lies with the people. And if we can get the people to absorb and, 
and, um, and, and resonate with the message of Ubuntu and the contributionism philosophy, we would win the hearts and minds of the people and very quickly we would grow the movement and the philosophy from the ground up as it should grow from the ground up from among the people. So we decided to run in 13 municipalities, the smallest municipalities, with the objective just to win one small town or one small municipality and that was our manifesto. One small town will change the world. So that started already in April 2016 here in South Africa, where we then ran. And once again, unfortunately, as much support as we had in the campaigning, I truly believed that we, would, we were going to win at least one little municipality where we could then install our mayor, who would then implement the contributionism and the Ubuntu philosophy, and turn that one small town into the model community that all the others would then follow. That did not happen. But what did happen is we realized that we don't have to be involved in politics. If we can find a mayor, a conscious mayor, and the co a conscious council that supports the mayor, we can get the mayor to open his mind or her mind and hearts and implement the Ubuntu philosophy into their town, whether we're involved in a political campaign or not. And very quickly, towards the end of 2016, we realized we have to pull out of politics because what started happening, and this is really important, what started happening after the elections in 2016, many of our members who, who were candidates for the Apuntu party, after the elections actually became victims of the regime and they became victimized and excluded from, from being offered jobs because they were seen as opposition and they were the Ubuntu guys, they were a big threat to the ANC and to the national uh, ruling party. And because we were so popular among the people and everybody loved the Ubuntu movement and our message, after the elections when once again as always the ruling party will win because that's how they stack the deck, our members became victimized and that was a terrible blow to me because I felt a sense of guilt and responsibility for dragging them into that and now I had no way of supporting them because after the elections the funding for the elections came to an end and there was no more funding and I could no longer continue funding these people, their families that gave their hearts, their lives up to campaign for the Ubuntu movement. So that became for, for many months, in fact for a whole year I had to carry many of these people and keep them going and sustaining them with a little bit of money here and there so they could find their feet and find something to do and find a source of income for their families. That seems to have now sort of corrected itself but the most important thing that came out of this is our realization that we don't need to be involved in politics and the moment we, were, we officially withdrew out of politics and launched the one small town can change the world strategy where we are no longer seen as an opposition party or someone who goes and contests the elections or tries and oppose or stand against somebody else where we are now a neutral body a neutral movement that has learned from 12 years of experience since 2005 when we started promoting this ideology and this philosophy and this very simple system. We have learned and walked this long and winding road where we now no longer are in opposition to anyone. We don't contest, oppose or resist anyone. We are bringing the message of unity, prosperity and abundance to any mayor or mayoress of any town, any municipality, anywhere in the world bring the plan of action, how to implement it, how to create abundance and prosperity, how to bring funding, how to bring our own source of electricity that provides a foundation for everything we do. And this has exploded beyond my wildest expectation. And this is why it is very important if anyone joins the Ubuntu movement now and sees any of the older communication where we're still talking about politics and so forth, because it's going to be out there in the social media forever. It's impossible to remove it. Please keep in mind that the Ubuntu movement is not involved in politics in any way whatsoever. We have become a true liberation movement of higher consciousness, unity, prosperity and abundance that involves and absorbs and in includes and invites everybody, no matter who you are, what background, what color, what creed, what religion you are. The Ubuntu movement and our strategy and our philosophy is a model that in includes and invites everybody. So learn as much as you can, read as much as you can read, watch the One Small Town video, read the new bullet point plan of action for the mayors. We now have a letter with which we can provide our 
national coordinators so we can send the same letter to all the mayors around the world so they get the same message and the same communication and this is what we are now going to be launching from 2018 and see how it grows. Right now we've started with Mayor Ron Higgins in Canada. Within seven months of launching the One Small Town strategy in January 2017 we had Mayor Ron Higgins reach out to us and decided to implement it. By November 2017 he had implemented it and got the buy-in from his entire council. As I stand talking to you on the 13th of January 2018 we have mayors from more mayors in Canada, USA, South Africa, Australia, UK and even Madagascar talking to me. I have mayors um, in our neighboring countries reaching out through people and through the Ubuntu movement members. So keep this in mind, we are growing and this is expanding so quickly. I can't even imagine what 2018 is going to deliver in 12 months from now. So that is the reason why the Ubuntu movement has pulled out of politics. The Ubuntu party is no more. We are now focusing entirely on the one small town can change the world strategy. In the next video, I will talk to you about our three-point strategy for 2018 and beyond. One small town, one small farm or project, and one small gathering, which is our three-prong attack or three-prong approach. We don't attack anything. Three-prong approach towards spreading the beautiful, unifying philosophy of Ubuntu and contributionism as far and as wide as we can do in 2018. Until we speak later, this is Michael Tellinger from the Ubuntu head office, Stone Circle Ubuntu here in Waterfall Boerfen, South Africa, sending you love and blessings for 2018 and beyond. Bye for now.